All right, guys, good morning. It is Monday morning here, and let's uh, just go through what we need to uh, be doing and what is to be expected for the next few days here. So, um, if you haven't heard, my FL2K, I hate to sound dramatic because so many, so many other people are dealing with so much more and going through so much right now, and my heart goes out to them, and I feel so bad, all that normal stuff, of course. Of course I feel terrible, but that's not to uh, take away from me being dramatic right now. So my FL2K kind of just got flipped. I have a lot of different challenges I need to work on and work towards right now. And um, if you guys didn't know, FL2K is this weekend. So right now it is Monday and before Friday, probably Thursday morning, I need to be in Gainesville now. So FL2K is moved from Bradenton Motorsports Park to Gainesville Raceway. And that's three hours from here. So uh, now we got to get hotel rooms. We have to figure out making sure that everything is there with us because we're not just coming home every night. I have to make sure all the animals are good and all that stuff is good. And then I have to also make sure the car is 1000% good with all the parts and everything that I need because we're not just coming home at every night. All right, guys, don't mind me just eating some peanuts here on my way to go get the motor. But something insane and beautiful all at once is there's just a massive, massive effort of people heading south. Everything that you can imagine from work vehicles with fuel, Publix trucks bringing food, storm work people, uh, generators, linemen, you know, I saw a, a truck that just had a bunch of giant tarps on it. Everything you can imagine is heading south right now to uh, Fort Myers and uh, Newport and Northport area. And it's just insane to see. There's so much, there's such a huge effort and push from the state and from private citizens right now that it's just really, it really is something amazing. Well guys, as you can see, it is now currently uh, dark o'clock. Uh, it's it's 8.10 and I have been out all day. I left my house at 11.30 today, I think, and went to Fast Forward Racing, which is like an hour and a half from me. Picked up the bottom end. You guys can't see me at all, but just imagine that you can see my um, beautiful face. And uh, picked up the engine at uh, Fast Forward, talked for a little while, went through, uh, what they did, what they fixed, all kinds of good stuff, and I, it's weird to say, but they didn't actually fix anything. They they checked everything. They checked all the rings. They checked the pistons. They checked the rods. They checked the can the crank. They checked the cylinder head. They cleaned it all. They went through it all, and it was perfect. Put it all back together, and. Um, sent me on my way. Now I'm on my way to induction to pick it back up because I dropped it off there after. And they put the cylinder head back on. They put, um, they put the cams back in, the timing, the motor plate, all that good stuff. They kind of dressed it up their level. And then I can grab it and bring it home and dress it up my level and put it in. So it's like a three person job, you know? Um, I really need to, I've never put a 2J head on. Um, I need to learn how to do it, but they are they are experts at this stuff and they have all the parts they have all the gaskets they have all the o-rings they have all the good stuff so they put the oil pan on and all that good stuff so yes i can do it at home i would be able to figure it out it's not a difficult engine to do but why do it yourself when you work with the best in the business induction performance you know it'd be kind of crazy to be like no 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 let me do it so they can do it they can put it back together take all variables out of the equation and um I, I don't know we didn't find anything so it's very weird but otherwise um that's where we're at so maybe maybe it was just the rings didn't seat correctly maybe they freed up now maybe one was just pinched in some weird way i don't know uh fast forward said they didn't know they were not sure and now it's time to keep exploring other options, put it back in and see if this fixes it. But again, it was crazy. I got no idea and they don't either. So crazy deal. Guys, guess what? 
The engine's back. So it's like nine o'clock at night right now. Engine is home. She's looking so fine. Such a good looking unit. A little driving around today, but not too bad. So I'm gonna pull this thing out. Probably start to get it dressed just a little bit. Not gonna go too crazy on it here. Uh, just get into a good position to get this thing back in tomorrow. Um, go through a couple things that we wanted to look at and get this thing back in. So first time to get it out, that takes a few minutes, but shouldn't be too bad, the old engine hoist. But I am so pumped. Huge shout out to the guys over at Induction Performance today because they uh, grinded on this thing, spent a little bit extra time after hours to make sure that it was good and finished and ready to go. And then Alpha was there tuning a pretty cool BMW like E36 M3, it was pretty cool. But um, he was tuned in late night anyways, so went and grabbed it, got to hang out at Jeremy's, uh, faster problems for a while while they were finishing it up. And then also I had to patch my tire because I got a hole in that tire. But thankfully I keep patch kit with me. So that was a random tangent. Oh, and I think I already said it, but fast forward race engines, those guys are so freaking great. They're gonna be at FL2K, so we can, you know, talk to them if we do have any issues, but I am hopeful and confident and optimistic that we'll be good. So unless there's something just completely wrong on this thing, and this, this block is messed up in some way that we don't know, but I think we'll be good. So time to pull this thing apart. Now, time to uh, do my thing. So one thing that they said to do was make sure that the intake was extra, extra clean. Uh, no oil whatsoever. It was pretty clean though. I'll show you guys. Um, I run green oil in this car, so it's pretty easy to tell how dirty it is. You can see some residue down there, but like when I reach in, I have a throttle body. It's pretty clean. So I'm just gonna use some brake clean, clean that out. Back in the way back is a little dirty, but not too bad. So clean this guy out a little bit and then put the put this unit on and then probably the rear plate next and continue from there. But this thing's easy. Done this. This is my second time I've ever reassembled it. So it's not been out a bunch. Okay, let's go. All right, it's like 1030 now. Engine is pretty much dressed. Um, oil filter housing is on there. Intake is on, exhaust is on, coolant neck is on, uh, fuel pump setup is on, uh, rear plate and the coolant line right here. So just takes a little while to do, a lot easier to do outside of the car than inside. And oh, starter's on. So just some things that I've found make it easier to uh, not do once it's in the car. So jack it up, swing it around over to there, lower her down into it and you guys know the deal, very easy. Super simple to do. I'm gonna try to do it now because tomorrow lowering it in there when it's hot and you get sweaty, it's really difficult to uh, work the little lowering jammer here and then you end up dropping the engine on the oil pan and you know, no, not exactly my favorite thing to do. I don't mind it, but it's not my favorite. All right, not bad. So it is now only 11.24, so I think uh, 45 minutes and the motor has dropped in. Uh, it still needs to be tightened up on all four corners, but the bolts are in loosely holding and now I can just kind of make sure everything's good. Lowering it in is always a little tricky to line it up with all four spots, but I've been getting, uh, but it's really not too bad. It's actually kind of a uh, fun little challenge, but uh, now that that's in, I can just finish dressing it and plug in all the wiring put the turbo on, all that good stuff. There's still a lot to do, but um, it's amazing. You just do one thing after another and suddenly you have a back together vehicle. Um, one thing that I did do when I was trying to pull this connector out, I could not get this clip undone and out. Look, it's like, it's just not coming out. And then I tried to like do it and pull on the wires a little bit and then it just popped right out unfortunately. So I have to pin back to this alternator for the Excite wires and the alternator wires are right here. Oh, low down there. 
All right, I almost left, but I wanted to do a little more. Throttle cable, uh, fuel pump, fuel lines, turbo. I don't know if I showed you that. Turbo, um, starting to finish up some more lines and stuff. Starting to put some random nut and bolts in. Uh, bags are winding down. Already got a bunch of empty bags. But yeah, we're getting close. Not too bad. This thing is so easy to uh, put back together and then just you know, go through it a couple times and make sure it's good to go. So time to, uh, time to call it for here. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, nothing like a nice, beautiful morning to work on the race car two days before the event. Lovely. All right, well, I got a lot to do, you guys know. There's just a lot of boring stuff to do. All right, well, I um, unfortunately just spent about 35 minutes repinning this uh, alternator wire. Hopefully I don't rip it out again. Uh, it's not the strongest pin system, but it is what it is. I got three chickens here hanging out and watching me. A lot of feathers all around in this place. These are three of my favorites, I'll be honest. I'll say it. Franklin, Rotini, and um, Alfredo. I don't know what they're eating over here. Bugs of some kind. What are you doing, Franklin? Where's everyone else? I wanna pet you. Hey, I wanna pet you. He's the only one that lets me pet him. Yeah. <laughs> only Rotini. It may not look any different, but I can promise you I've done a lot. So a lot of the wiring's on, a lot of the vacuum lines are on, the flex plate from ATF is on, all this is bolted up back here, grounds are on. Uh, I'm just kind of getting ready to pop the transmission in. Um, lower oil line on, all kinds of good stuff. Gonna put the uh, alternator in. Put the, the starter wires are all on, the starter's in. So we're not too far out. We're getting there. Just um, it's a slow burn. It's like one thing at a time. I just kinda, I don't rush on this kind of thing. I just kinda like slowly chip away at it, take my time, make sure I do it right, but we're close. Transmission is up and in. Uh, should just lift it right off. Bada boom. All right, well, it is fully done and back together. I think it took me a total of about seven or eight hours. Uh, oil's in it, transmission fluid. I just need to put coolant in it when it starts up and when it's running. Not crazy on that deal. That, that can be done in a minute. Um, but everything is on tight, or at least it should be. Um, we'll know pretty quickly if there's a leak anywhere, but I doubt it. Um, I have pretty solid faith but obviously that's why you start it up and test it and make sure. So right here I have the fast forward race engines startup procedure. Failure to follow these steps can cause engine damage. They said this is the one for their Coyote, but they said it's about the same basically. So I'm gonna just go through this, make sure I got all my bases covered and fire her up. So let's get to it. Oh, it says fill the cooling system with appropriate coolant per your application. We recommend using a vacuum tub. Hmm, all right, put some cool in there. Already, step one, I was already doing it wrong. Fill the engine with oil, done. Check the routing of all belts, hoses, and wiring to make sure they're clear, yep, good there. Hook up a wide band, yep. Um, start the engine if it doesn't start within 10 seconds of cranking. Verify that everything is properly connected. Um, excessive cranking can lead to fuel washing. The cylinder walls, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, as the engine starts, the first things to monitor are oil pressure, water temperature, and RPM. Stop the engine immediately if any unusual noises are, pre are present. Reading is tough. Uh, do not run any longer than is needed to verify everything is operating correctly. Stop the engine and visually check for fl fluid leaks. See, that's what I was saying. Um, at this time, you should also check engine oil, coolant level, and add fluids as necessary. Oh, that's crazy. Manatee County 911 system is currently not receiving calls or texts from Verizon customers. Okay, um, 
We now recommend putting the vehicle on a chassis dyno to check ignition timing and monitor your wideband device. I don't have one of those. Uh, once the engine has reached coolant operating temperature, switch to running from a medium load to a medium heavy load. This can accomplish, uh, whatever. This can be accomplished by running the car in a higher gear, fourth or higher, don't have that many gears. Um, stop the engine and visually check fluid leaks, okay. Sneak up on the tune by making short pulls while monitoring oil pressure. Yeah, we definitely didn't do that last time. Uh, we recommend changing the engine oil and filter after the initial dyno session. Well, I don't have a dyno session planned. Um, oil notes. What to use, what oils to use. We recommend 20W50, but again, this is for coyotes. So it might be a little different for the 2Js. They sell a lot of coyotes. Um, about the failures and just a nice little uh, tuners stop chasing horsepower numbers please remember the customer is looking for a trouble free experience and will never notice small differences in peak horsepower wow that's a nice little note for the tuners and you internet guys good stuff so fast forward race engine startup procedure I'm gonna go grab some water make sure that we got some in there and start this thing up in a few minutes all right, time to give this thing a first start up, put some coolant in it. Well, just water. Get out of here, chickens. Get out of here. Hey. Whoa, whoa. Get out. Still two more of you in here. Three more. Out. No, out. Get out. I don't see any leaks over here. Dang it, the battery don't have the juice. All right, Everstart charger. Let's see if that'll do it. Okay, we'll try hitting it again here real quick. Turn down the radio. They are just talking about street racing on Gandhi on the radio, which was pretty funny. If you guys know Florida, street racing on Gandhi happens. Oh, she sounds a little charged up now. I see oil pressure. again it idles pretty well now got some heat in it um, probably gonna take it out tomorrow cruise it around a little bit but I got to uh, get on the computer for a little while and do some uh, what do you call it I guess um, non race car related things I got to edit and I don't know I don't think you guys care about this but edit and do some um, no, built kind of stuff and FL2k prep on that kind of thing and Get ready and then tomorrow I'll drop these bottles off at SNS Motorsports down in Sarasota. Get these filled up, make sure that we got CO2, make sure that we got plenty of nitrous, and then also 
um, start loading the truck, clean it up, and all that kind of good, fun stuff for FL2K because we're not just going to be, you know, hometown chilling this time. We got to actually travel. We haven't traveled to a race since March, so we got a lot to do. But hope you guys enjoyed that video. I definitely am super pumped. So, so happy with uh, myself and everybody on the team over at Induction and Fast Forward Race Engines that we were able to come together and get this thing going. They all did their part flawlessly. I did my part. And now the next part is get with Alpha. We'll get some timing checks. We'll get the tuning going and then um, bring it up to Gainesville and he'll be there too. So we'll get um, some track side tuning, but we'll be uh, firing on all cylinders, hopefully. So that's gonna do it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it saucy. I will see you next time.